And it is time now to visit with Dr. K, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. He's a retired physician and founder of Health Watch USA. Good morning, Dr. K. Hey, hello, Jack. How are you this morning, sir? Doing very good, very good. We've got a lot of information to cover here. Uh, the new BF.7 variant gaining steam, you say? Uh, yes, and this is primarily in Europe, and it's quite worrisome because Europe has the countries that we tend to follow a few weeks later. And it is spiking now with hospitalizations in England and also in some of the other European countries. And we need to get prepared for a fall surge. And of course, we've talked about the best way to prepare for that is to get a booster. You know, this debate whether natural immunity versus vaccine immunity, which is best, is really immaterial. Because with these immune escape variants, you're going to get a reinfection if you get exposed to those variants and you're far enough away from your exposure to that virus or far enough away from that vaccine. And so getting a booster is critical. And, you, you know, Jack, I tell you, our rates are very low in Kentucky and we really do need to improve that. Rates of people getting the, the new one? Yes, rates of people getting the new bivalent booster. And even though our COVID-19 rates are falling, we've, you know, seen that before. We get into these lulls, everybody feels the pandemic's over, we reached herd immunity, and then the virus mutates, hits us with another wave, and we're back into a spike of infections along with hospitalizations. And much of this can be avoided. And as we said with the last show, the booster, the bivalent COVID-19 booster, this also can prevent long COVID, and that is also a grave concern. All right, let's talk about the disinformation that is, a, is appearing in scientific journals. Uh, yes, quite a bit of it. And, and, you know, we went through this with discussions on hydroxychloroquine and all the other types of therapies that people would be coming up with, and they would quote an article. And there are actually paper mills that write these articles for people. Everything is essentially made up. They look good when you look at the data as reported in the article. Sometimes you find a mistake, sometimes you don't, but they still get published. And in one committee who looked at this, and this was a committee out of, I believe, the United Kingdom at the Committee on Publication Ethics, found that 2% of the papers were tainted by this type of malfeasance. And this really can cost lives. One large publisher, which was a journal group out of the publisher Wiley, just withdrew 500 papers. And some of this, unfortunately, is not just, you know, an author wanting to make himself more famous or advance his career. Some of it is very organized disinformation campaigns from foreign nations. We talked about this way back in, I think, 2020, where a European Union report found disinformation campaigns that were coming out of Russia. And it's a problem because they tend to blunt your response they sway people away from following good public health advice, and it makes our nation weaker. Right now, rates of COVID are falling, but Kentucky, we're at the second highest in the nation. We're right behind Puerto Rico as far as number of cases. And I would suspect that we're going to see a turnaround in the fall because our vaccination rates and our rates of boosting are quite low compared to the rest of the nation, and our nation's low compared to the world. So it's really, to me, is um, unbelievable. And when you talk about safety of the vaccine, Jack, there are countries that have almost 100%, like 98% of eligible individuals who could get a vaccination have gotten one. And we are way lower than that. So it it's really doesn't make much sense. If, if bad things would have happened, these countries would have been suffering. And as it turns out, our rates of deaths from COVID-19, our rates of long COVID, our rates of lasting disability are much higher than those other countries, simply because we have a higher number of cases and we have more severe disease. One more thing, CDC lifting masking requirements in some hospitals, is that a good idea? No, I think that's a very bad idea. We're still at an area right now in the United States where 90% 
of the nation really has either high or substantially high cases. In other words, they're in the yellow, they're in the red for community spread. And hospitals are areas that have the most vulnerable individuals. You commonly get transfer of patients between hospitals, etc. And I should add that we're going into the flu season. Wearing masks in these critical areas, and I would also add people who prepare your food, probably is like wearing a hairnet when preparing food. It's just a good idea, regardless of whether or not you have COVID. Similar with hand washing, similarly with wiping down your counters in your kitchen, washing your food when you get it. That's all good hygiene, regardless of the pandemic. So, yeah, I think that's an extremely bad idea. HealthWatchUSA.org, right? That is correct. And we do have our conference videos up. You can see a video on disinformation with Sweden from Dr. Nelly Bresselaers, who I believe may be on our show at 9 a.m. on Thursday. And I think that would be very enlightening as far as all the disinformation we've had about Sweden and schools and everything else. You'll hear another side of the story of what's happened up in that nation. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, thank you so much. Thank you, Jack.